morning and welcome back to the vlog. You probably noticed I haven't posted in a little bit. That's because there's not been sort of huge changes happening on the ground. So I thought I'd use today's vlog to do a big update on all the little things that have been going on since the last vlog. As you can see, I'm still living at Sonia's, my boss's house. So she's been super amazing putting me up and makes me feel so at home here. As a lot of you know, I lived back with my folks, like a lot of young people. I was trying to save up to get my own place, but my uh, folks being of a certain age that put them at risk from COVID, I didn't want to be bringing it back to them. It puts me in a difficult position really because like you think, well, how am I going to kind of get out of this? It's great staying at Sonia's in the short term, but still need a bit of a plan of what to do next because it's not really a long-term strategy to stay at your boss's house but she does have cool cats and it was father's day in the uk this weekend so give me an opportunity to pop over and catch up with my folks you know from a <laughs> social distancing way I've done that a couple times and i guess it gives you a sense of normality at least that although we're not out of it that there is some light at the end of the tunnel. So just heading in now, part of the daily routine that I guess a lot of hospitals are having now is, and a lot of other workplaces, we're having temperature checks before we go in. And as of last week, we have to wear a mask at all times once inside the hospital. So increasing the levels of PPE, which is weird because <laughs> when uh, the prevalence of COVID was a lot higher, we weren't wearing masks everywhere at the hospital. But <laughs> when it's at its lowest level so far, we have to start wearing masks. You kind of think maybe that should have been done a bit sooner. Who knows? And um, we also get changed into our scrubs as well once we get to the hospital and leave them there for infection control. So all of these new things. So I'm going to crack on and I'll catch up with you halfway through the shift. And now's a good time as well to clean all these things with some alcohol wipes because these are classic fomites that we could be carrying the infection around on. So, welcome back to the shift. I was going to give you guys an update halfway through, but it's been so busy that I didn't get a chance to, you know, I had a lunch break, but I didn't get a chance to record anything. It's just been so mad today. So the time is quarter past five and yeah, we just had a lot of patience this morning. The night team did a great job to try and get the department as good as possible for us to take over from, but there were still quite a few patients waiting and it's taken us most of the day to really get on top of things. It may surprise you to hear they aren't patients with COVID-19. They're pe people with really general medical problems. So if this was a day that I'd seen a year ago, like this time last year, I think it was a pretty normal day for what we're seeing. Throughout the pandemic, we've actually seen fewer general admissions and general presentations to the emergency department and that is changing you know we're seeing much more the levels that we'd normally expect we are still seeing a few patients with COVID-19 so we still have our red zone so our area where anyone has suspicion of COVID-19 goes to and that's so we can isolate the patients and protect them and also protect our members of staff but most people in that area in the red zone don't have COVID they have general respiratory infections or other infections or other things that cause shortness of breath, so like pulmonary embolisms or um, heart attacks or heart failure and things like that. So just to give you an idea, last week I worked on the red zone. I saw one patient with COVID-19 on the whole shift where I typically see maybe four or five. So that gives you an idea of kind of the prevalence we're seeing at the moment. As I said at the start of this vlog, I haven't updated you guys in a while because I haven't seen huge changes that I thought I'd really need to talk about, but there's been lots of little things. So let's talk about some of them. So the red zone, the area with COVID patients, that's really reduced in size given the numbers we've seen and I really like the way our department adapts to the number of patients that we're going to see and actually changes and ranges the department pretty much on a weekly basis depending on what type of patients we're seeing. So when you arrive on shift you get allocated either to the red zone or the green zone and I know lots of people thought that's a bit stupid because surely you should have the same group of doctors on the red zone every day because that way we won't then you know, spread potential infection amongst patients in the green zone on our other days. Well, I sort of take that on board, but I mean, our PPE in the red zone should be enough to protect us. By having that strategy, we're sort of admitting that our PPE 
isn't good enough. And the other thing is working in the red zone is generally a bit more intense than working in the green zone. So if you have one set of people just constantly working in there, it's slightly not that fair. Although, having said that, as we saw today, the green zone now is really becoming the area that is more intense. And this may surprise a lot of people. We are still seeing patients in the red zone with suspicion of COVID-19 in just basic PPE. So plastic apron that doesn't cover your arms or neck, uh, a, a surgical mask like this that obviously has gaps at the side. So, you know, particles can get around the side rather than a proper mask that filters those particles out. And goggles and gloves, but the gloves only go up to your wrist. We've seen the guidelines change throughout this pandemic. A lot of people aren't happy with them, but that's the way they are at the moment. Whenever we do aerosol generating procedures, that means particles from people's throats can be thrown into the air. With things like CPR or intubation, then we are wearing the respirator mask, full gowns, you know, sort of higher level of PPE. As I alluded to, CPR, so resuscitation, is an aerosol generating procedure. And because we're not wearing full PPE in the red zone, if someone did have a cardiac arrest, which is very unlikely, but people in the red zone are could possibly deteriorate whether that's through covid or not and in a cardiac arrest time is critical so you need to start chest compressions as soon as possible but because obviously we don't have full ppe on to be able to to do that cpr there has to be one person at any one time in full ppe floating in the department and they should be the first person to start cpr in a cardiac arrest and that means that while they're starting cpr everyone can get their gear on and come into the room so there's no delay with chest compressions so I think that's a really nice sort of guideline that's come from the top. Some of the changes that have been made have been great, some not so good, but what is really nice is the hospitals have kind of been quite responsive in getting our feedback, whether we think things have worked and things haven't worked and what we should do for the future. And there's actually a board in the foyer of the hospital that we can write what we thought worked well and that gets, uh, you pin it up or write what you think worked badly and pin that up um, to help take things forward. So some of the things that I thought worked really well, Firstly, the medical team and the A&E team have been working together in the red zone. You may think that the sort of emergency department team and the medical team are the same thing, and that leads to a bit of confusion. So just to give you guys some context, when anyone comes into hospital, um, to the emergency department, if we feel like they need to stay in hospital, we have to refer to a hospital team, so a hospital specialty. So that could be things like general surgery, they think they might need an operation, or things like orthopedics, if there's a bone problem, or things like a general medical problem. So that's what patients with COVID-19 would sit under. And because we've had lots of those medical admissions, they've stopped us having to refer to the medical team. So the team, the emergency team and the medical team have come together in that red zone so we can work directly with the medical consultants to get advice directly with them, which is great. I think it's great for patients, been great for us. I've learned how to do a full medical clerking, which I haven't done for a while. I mean, the paperwork can be a little bit too much, but again, it comes back to that intensity earlier when you work in the red zone, you're having to do lots of things and have some difficult conversations. So what patients' views are on resuscitation and what resuscitation is and if we think it's going to be of benefit to them. You know, these are super important conversations to have. Well, on a more lighter note, one of the other really good things is we've been having free food. Ever since the pandemic started, our canteen has been open 24 hours a day, giving us free sandwiches and soup for anyone on the evening shift or night shift, which has been absolutely brilliant. And the cooks that they've had there that have staffed it have been so nice sort of staying up all night um dissing us out food and so massively thank you to them and the people that you know put that in place i hope that continues because i can't imagine it's that expensive because <laughs> i got a bit of insider knowledge that all the food is patient food that's about to go out of date in a couple of days so <laughs> i can't imagine it costs them that much to run it so even though the food is <laughs> on its way out it does make a huge difference you do feel more valued that you know you can in your break just go somewhere have some hot food get yourself sorted out I think that's been good. One of the bad things is I think the parking tickets are back. 
<laughs> so viewers to the first vlogs will probably remember I said that they've suspended giving parking tickets to people who can't find a space, so we have to park on the approach roads to the hospital, which kind of happened on a fairly common basis, and although we had permits to park, we couldn't find a space, we'd end up getting parking tickets, which very often would get reversed, but it's still hassle. The other day when I came into work, I saw that the parking tickets had been put on some other cars, and it's just like, ah. Oh. What I find weird about that is that it's almost an admission that it's wrong because during a pandemic it stops, but as soon as things come back to normality, they start up again. It's kind of, ah. Anyway, tough day done, and it was actually really chilly in the emergency department, so coming out here and seeing the sunshine, I had no idea what I was missing out on. It's absolutely gorgeous day. So I'm going to go catch some sunshine, get out of these scrubs, get home, and I might give you a bit more of an update of things that are happening in the home situation. So we're back where we started on the vlog. I mentioned the uh, free food we got in the canteen. One other thing that I massively want to mention is a bunch of Sonia's neighbours have been cooking for us during the course of this pandemic. More free food, so thank you to everyone that did that. Massively appreciate it. So given the relatively few cases I'm seeing of COVID-19, I'm not going to do as frequent updates on the vlog as I did when I started. And it gives me an opportunity to roll in more of the regular videos I did that I know many of you enjoyed as well. So that's something I'm looking forward to doing. The last update really is a very sad update. Regular viewers to the vlog will remember we been feeding what we thought was a stray cat we actually ended up finding its owner but the cat we nicknamed cat and gray because he looked like he belonged on a pirate ship but he was a super friendly chap would pop over a couple times a day and got on great with Sonia's cats and really really sad news that he ended up um, being killed by a dog on a leash there was a kind of uh, does anyone see that documentary don't with cats it was kind of a mini version of don't with cats as in somebody witnessed what happened and was posting on a local facebook group and they managed to figure out whose dog it was very sad so captain gray rest in peace old chap it was lovely to meet you so sorry that was a bit of a downer to end today's vlog but anyway i hope you're all well both sonia and i are off tomorrow so we're gonna have a little trip to the beach get a bit of sea in i'll probably be sunburned on the next one i hope you're all well thank you again so much for all the support and i'll be back soon